Hi, my name is Erica Saucedo. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and I wanted to go through the different neuromodulators with you and why I choose Xeomin. So there are four neuromodulators available in the United States. One is Botox, which is the most famous and um, one that most people ask for. Uh, the second one to come out was Dysport. Then Xeomin came out, which is the one that I prefer. And the last one to have recently come out is uh, Juvo. So what is, uh, what is a neuromodulator? It's essentially a, a chemical that will stop the uh, contraction of our muscles. In this case, um, it's modulating that nerve from firing. Uh, so all of the neuromodulators use the botulinum toxin A uh, and um, that is produced by Clostridium botulinum, which is a bacteria. So a bacteria produces this toxin we use that toxin, and um, in the case of uh, neuromodulators, we inject it into the muscle to cause uh, paralysis. So the toxin causes paralysis. How that works at a cellular level is if this is the nerve and it's firing, it releases acetylcholine, which then is taken up into the muscle, and then the signal is to contract the muscle. Botox works by attaching to the nerve, which then does not allow the release of acetylcholine or blocks the release of the acetylcholine. So there's no acetylcholine, there's no signal to the muscle to contract. And so that's how the botulinum toxin works in all of the neuromodulators. The difference um, between Xeomin and the other three, which is Botox, Dysport, and Juveau, is that Xeomin is considered very clean, and that's because it has no accessory proteins. So you can think of it like here's the toxin, and there's little accessory proteins that are not important for the function of the toxin. Um, and, and those accessory proteins are what is on the natural toxin. So for example, when if you were to look at what Clostridium botulinum toxin botulin produces, it would be this toxin with the accessory proteins. But we then take it and remove the accessory proteins, which is how Xeomin is done, and therefore it's just the pure toxin, which is clean, cleaner, and also important because those little accessory proteins are what our body may recognize as foreign and we may mount a response to and therefore we could develop antibodies and immunity to the Botox or the, excuse me, the botulinum toxin. Um, and so Xeomin does not have that um, risk of developing immunity. And the reason I started looking this up is I had a nurse who told me she had complete immunity. It didn't matter. She could do Botox, Xeomin, do any of the products, and it didn't work on her. And so she had been using Botox for years, and unfortunately she developed uh, an immune to it, uh, an immunity to it, and so none of the toxins work anymore. And so then when I started looking things up, I actually found a really great uh, YouTube video from Dr. Gavin Chan um, from Australia. He's a dermatologist who talks about it more in depth and he does actually a great interview. I'll put the link below with um, Dr. Jurgen Frevert, um, who is the uh, maker of, um, of Xeomin. And so I would highly recommend watching that. It goes much more in depth than, <clears throat> excuse me, than I'm doing right now. But essentially what they're talking about is yes, immunity can happen. And I don't feel like it's talked about a lot. So that would be like, you know, you you may find, gosh, I'm finding that um, my Botox is taking a little longer to kick in or it's, or it's shorter dur duration. It's not lasting as long, or maybe it's not, uh, not as good an effect as it used to have. Those things may be signs of not complete immunity, obviously, because it's still working, but some immunity to the uh, botulinum toxin. And so that cannot happen with the Xeomin. I know what you would be thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. What if I've already been doing Botox? What do I do then? So what's recommended is to go through a washout period. So basically you want to get the Botox out of your system. Um, the recommended time period is anywhere from 6 to 18 months. So you know, I think most of us can't go too long, so, you know, I'd say six months, that's my humble opinion. I think that would be great if you could get the Botox out of your system six months, and then, you know, doing only Xeomin after that, so then you're not producing the antibodies, um, and you're not at risk for getting an immunity to the, to the product. Um, and that is pretty much it. I really produce this video for my clients, and I appreciate you guys watching. 
Uh, if you have any questions or you want more information, let me know. And thank you so much for watching.